Welcome back to the Mini Machine Shop. I'm Dave. Uh, this episode, I produced a video yesterday on knurling and all the math and what I came up with. And in the comments, I got called on the carpet. Good show. A Michael Bashaw, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, caught some errors in the math, but also going over it, I caught another serious error. <laughs> So this is how to knurl, take two. All right, here we are again, going through the math on knurling. And because of Michael, I figured I'd better just completely re-review, reinvestigate absolutely everything in detail. So the first question, I guess hide this stuff. First question was why I had mentioned there was another video that I watched and the guy did his math. When I duplicated it, why was I so far off on his calculation? What he did was, where's that paper? Yeah, he rolled out the neural, had all the tick marks, picked two points, measure the distance, come up with it here, divide it by the number of ticks, boom, you wind up with it. <laughs> What happened was I completely messed up the count. It's not 75 ticks. It's 100 ticks. So he can, I, doing it that way, I came up with 0 0.029. And where am I? I'm down in here saying it's 0 0.302. So there's only a few thousands difference. The difference between his method and mine is his, you're sitting in here with the caliper and an eye loop and you're trying to guess exactly where to a thousandth of an inch the distance is this 2.934 with my method you're using the caliper to, cal uh, to measure the actual diameter of the part and I did double check both of them in multiple different points and yes they're nice and round to less than a thousandth of an inch but mine you're actually using the caliper and you're accurately measuring the inch and then you're coming up with the circumference of it and by coming up with that circumference you can set your caliper exactly you can put it on top of the paper and you can see you know that you are landing really pretty much so on um, a tick mark but what I did was I wanted to make sure I had really good marks so yeah and the reason was I calibrated I took them both of them out of the this is not it it's, they're still in I put them back in the uh, knurling scissor but I calibrated both of them out of the knurling scissor and one of them was where's the diameters yeah 625 one of them came in at 0.625 the other diameter came in at 621 to get the circumference, you got to multiply it by pi, and you come up with this. Uh, one of them was 0.1963, which told me there were 65 neurons. When I put that measurement, uh, I rolled out a new one. Here's the 620. Here's the 625. So I'm putting, the, setting the calipers for this distance, and I'm setting it on the appropriate neural tick marks, and counting out how many ticks I'm getting. So one of them gave me 65, the other gave me 66. So, okay, and it was right on it, too. You, you dial in 1.951, I round it up, one, and it lands on 66 knurls on the 621, yeah, I've got this mislabeled, on the 621 um, impression. So I said, okay, forget it. <laughs> Here comes the eye loop and a teeny little marks luckily you look at the edge of this thing and this is chamfered and also I was looking at okay is it chamfered or beveled okay bevel is to reduce a square edge chamfer is symmetrical sloping surface at an edge alright I guess I'm beveling <laughs> so this is beveled and this face is black so it was real easy to use a black marker and 
mark it off. So I had marks all the way around it, counting them out by five, both of them, and I actually had to make sure of where things were. If I marked this one as one, then I marked every five, one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or no, next five and the next five. How many is that? I'm saying five, ten, fifteen. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So I knew how I was counting this and came up with uh, 65, both of them. So the pitch on this is 65 neurals per circumference. So now gets into the pitches here. If you did the circumference divided by 65, I'm two thousands off on it. Um, now here comes the math. This is where I did something wrong. Where was the original? Yeah, the original formula that I put in the video yesterday, I'm saying diameter divided by 302. Um, it's the part circumference divided by 030. What did I draw? Yeah, I dropped off. I said, you know, just forget that. Call it 30 thousandths. So if you take the part circumference and you divide it by 30 thousandths, you're going to have how many um, ticks you're going to have on that surface. Then you take, drop off the fraction, use the whole number, and you multiply that times 30. So it's going to give you the amount of um, ticks on the circumference. Then you take the cutting circumference, this is where Michael corrected me, you have to divide it by pi to get the cutting diameter. So I did a test part on it. I actually machined a piece of aluminum, came up with an exact diameter reading of 402. According to all of this math, the circumference is 402 times pi, gives me that. Then um, the circumference divided by the 30 thousandths means I'm going to get 42.1, so that's where it's off on the diameter. You're going to start drifting by a hundred thousands. So that gives me the number of neurals and I did caliper that dimension and stuck it on where the sheet go? Oh this sheet. Stuck it on this sheet and did verify yes I am going to get 42 neurals with that dimension. 42 well you can't tell the point one but so I you knock off the fraction 42 times 30 thousands 1.26 which is the cutting circumference. And that's where Michael again corrected me. Now you gotta divide that, one would divide pi, to get the cutting diameter. So I machined the part from 402. I had to just take a thousandth off of it, and I knurled it. And there it is. You can actually see, I think in the camera, how much more reflections. Let me try different angles here. I'm trying to look at the camera to see if you can see. But there's all kinds of, the neurals are correct, but there's all kinds of spots in it. And when you look at it with the eye loop, what happened is there's peaks and then there's a smashed thing in a peak. So like the peak didn't make some of it. They're random and they're all over the place. So I, the math is correct. The knurling is correct. I'm not sure whether I just have bad uh, neurals, because these are cheap China ones that came from Harbor Freight, their tool post set. Um, or I didn't use, well I use a lot of fluid, but I think you might have to have a lot of fluid just flowing while it's running to keep the debris and stuff out of it. Maybe it's debris that's crushing it or something. Um, but my other math, which is completely wrong, was this guy. Uh, I had wiped out that step, but I'm just saying take the diameter times 302, drop the fraction, multiply the diameter times that, and you get the cutting diameter, which is absolutely BS. But it gave me that, 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 and more. I did five of them. It gave me nice knurls. Nothing's crushed. It's all really nice looking. So it's your choice. You can either use the mathematically correct thing and get that one type of neural, or you can use this completely irrelevant, I don't know what to call it, formula, and get nice neurals. Um, so for now, 
I'm retiring from knurling. <laughs> I started with a rod like that, and I now have this left over. <laughs> so it's been surfaced a few times and done a few times, but thanks, Michael, for leaving the comment and getting me to really go deep down into this whole thing and what's going on. So, like I said, I'm retired. Any more comments, please leave them. Thank you. Bye.